What's going on, everybody? Eric Lindquist at Stochastic here on the Chopper channel coming to you with a Thursday night football edition of Lindy's Leans, Likes, and Locks. We got Denver at New Orleans. What a time to be alive. Hit that like button, subscribe button, notification bell. Goes a long way for me on this video. Goes a long way for you. That way you become a prize whenever great content is going live here at our little neck of the YouTube woods. Buffalo money line comes through for us. No James Cook. So that gets voided in the like category. So hey, want to know here on the video from Monday Night Football. Primetime games have been really, really nice to us. Had some uh, a, a smash of a Saturday of, of a Sunday afternoon. Also had the massive Eckler play that showed up in tails. We'll talk about that here on the onset of this video because again, if you want to get all of my plays, no matter what it is, we're going to go lean like lock like we always do on this. But if you want to get all of my goods, well, that'll be in tails. That is tails by Odd Shopper. The link is down below. Use promo code Lindy five zero to get fifty percent off all of my picks. There it is on your screen. Ten bucks for the first week, twenty five for the first month. Would love to have you there. We're going to be firing up a ton of MLB. We're going to be firing up a ton of NBA here coming up. Well, not a ton of MLB because it's almost over, but uh, the NBA for sure starts on Tuesday and you want to be in there before then. NBA Lindy's was an absolute smash fest. MLB Lindy's was an absolute smash fest. And the last three weeks of NFL Lindy's have been an absolute smash fest. So I think you've been enjoying the videos. I appreciate everybody, all the likes, all the love. Come hang out, ask questions. Always love the DMs, daily picks and premium discord. 10 bucks for a first week. Pretty awesome opportunity, if you ask me. All righty, y'all. Without further ado, I'm super, super sick. I don't know if you can tell, but uh, we are going to push through because no days off. That's what we do here. Plus, uh, I'm still going to be on my couch watching football no matter what, no matter what kind of condition I'm in. So, producer Jacob, oh, take me out of my misery. Let's get to the picks. I kind of like the ugly football games in a dome. 36 and a half total here for Denver at New Orleans. We've seen this bet up from one and a half to two and a half here on the Denver side. Now, obviously, the key number being three, it isn't as crazy of a difference as what the two and a half moving to three is. And in fact, we're seeing 13, 15 cents of juice as you go up the 0.5. Now, you should see that because that three becomes a push. But when you talk about a low variance football game, that is a very, very important half point. I hope you understand. Uh, I think most of you understand just how uh, potent that'll be. But there are massive injuries on both sides of the ball. First off, New Orleans, Chris Olave out. Rashid Shahid had something done on his knee out. That is not ideal as well as Derek Carr going to be out for a third, well, second consecutive game, but uh, the third in the trio of offensive players there. I think that's going to create just tons of question marks as far as who the first read option is going to be here because everybody's assuming it's going to be Bud Means. Now, I didn't know who this character was coming into last week, but obviously he made an impression with Spencer Radler, who will be taking the ball from center, ended up being the main guy that he targeted here throughout the offense. And uh, I don't really know what to make of that because, again, super small sample size. You don't want to overreact to one singular football game ever. But it's a small sample size sport. And hey, they obviously have some rapport there in that uh, they were working second unit together. They were in the practice squad, it sounds like, together. So there's at least some kind of formulation that they've put together in the practice field that's showing up here overall. However, some of these numbers don't make a ton of sense to me. Even with Denver, Patrick Sertan being the main guy I want to point out here on the Denver side of the ball will be out. He's been a dominant quarter, not just in pass coverage, but in stopping the run as well. And I think we'll get to that when we get to the lock category, because I think this entire football game is going to be brutality, but kind of excited for it in that regard. I know Ben Raza uh, from Ben's Best Bets, my friend, uh, Ben Raza is going to be very happy to see ugly football because he loves it. But I'm going to start this off just in the lean category. I would be leaning towards Denver here. Obviously, the, the defense is still pretty much intact outside of Sertan. And then there's a lot of other injuries. I mean, you just go up and down the line for the New Orleans Saints side. They've got a guard in Ruiz and Patrick, both of them. Uh, well, Ruiz is now officially out. Patrick's going to be questionable for it. And Taysom Hill, he's going to be out for this one. He's doubtful on the injury report. So that's just so many missing pieces on the offensive side. I think Denver's defense still gets after New Orleans in terms of the pass coverage. I'm hoping not entirely, though. We'll get to why. Now, the other lean that I'm looking at is the Bud Means character. I mean, this is just such an interesting guy to break down. He's only 6'2", went through some of his tape uh, from the last game and looked decent enough, but they were in come from behind mode. They were trying to, uh, in that third, fourth quarter, do anything they could. Now, they did come from behind in that first half before Tampa Bay really put the foot on the gas. But Means is not really a guy that you want to be trusting to go catch you four balls. I know a lot of people are going to be looking at overs there. Anytime touchdown might be the more appealing of them. Obviously, these are lean categories, and 
I do think based on what we saw first read coverage there for Spencer Radler, that's the guy that he wants to target in this offense. But I think they could go to more 12 personnel. Obviously, that hasn't been a priority for New Orleans early on in the season. But Foster Moreau started to see the field a little bit more alongside Juwan Johnson. Foster Moreau, a very functional pass catcher back in his days with uh, almost at Oakland, Las Vegas. And then here in New Orleans, he's had a couple of really, really nice catches in very limited sample sizes. Not a great run blocker, though. And that's what I'm hoping they're doing a little bit more of. That's why Means is not going to be on the card. If you jump to the like, though, there is a Denver inactive active situation to be paying a lot of attention to. And it's at the tight end position of all things. Now, Bo Nix has had one of the shortest ADOTs you could possibly ever imagine. ADOT being averaged at the target to start off his national football career. And in fact, they're really, Sean Payton's playing it very close to the vest because of how good this defense is. I think that's an okay way to go about things. But when you're averaging just five and a half yards per reception in the National Football League, I got to ask a couple of questions about what you're exactly doing there on offense. But I think at the tight end position, we've seen a changing of the guard. Uh, Dulcich, Greg Dulcich, inactive last time out. You're still going to more than likely see Adam Troutman out there. He was active, although it became Lucas Kroll. Now, a lot of people probably don't know who Lucas Kroll is. That is just fine. But I want you to just see a guy who's going to be on the field for over half of the snaps. In fact, went back to all of the snap share there from that first game. Where, or sorry, second game where he was active there. 34 of the 56 total snaps, more than half the time he was out there. Wasn't extremely effective, but his calling card is pass catching. That is what they are trying to get him instilled there. Greg Dulcich wasn't getting by the way that Sean Payton wanted, and that's why they made the switch. And we've seen him activated instead, Lucas Kroll. So I'm looking at his eight and a half receptions as a really, really low number. There's also plus 150s lingering. There's not a ton of room in that lean category, but I'm paying very close attention to that one and a half receptions number. It's currently around the plus 150 mark. I, I think that's at least interesting. I want to see if there's any sharp money that I can kind of track or anything that's I'm seeing on Twitter, because sometimes if people really get excited about a play, you'll see that move to plus 135, plus 140, and I don't think it's remotely appealing at those numbers. I would want plus 160. Uh, plus 160 is really where I'm looking for in an ugly football game, short average depth the target, and a guy who's now had two weeks of familiarity here in this offense. And I think it's a pretty decent tight end, uh, somebody that I don't think will matter from a fantasy perspective for people in the near future. But Lucas Krull, I think he is definitely somebody that will be on the field for over half of snaps yet again fire him up for give me that nine, 10 yard catch. Uh, even though that would technically have to be two catches anyway, pay very close attention to those one and a half perceptions. All righty. Uh, before we get to the lock, you know what time it is. Bet 365. There's a lot of States where that is currently available. You know, what make me feel a lot better other than just tomato soup on this cold, brisk little Wednesday where I'm just dying. Bet 365 signups. Yeah. Colorado, Louisiana, Virginia, Kentucky, New Jersey, Arizona, Ohio, Iowa, Indiana, Pennsylvania, North Carolina. But here's the thing. The main reason I wanted to do it is it's advantageous for you. You bet five. Yeah, just five dollars. You get two hundred dollars in bonus bets. That's a ridiculous deal. And Pennsylvania, you're the newest of the states. North Carolina, come on and raise up. Take your shirt off. Twist it around your head. Spin it like a helicopter. You thought I wasn't going to do it. Oh, but friends, I did. Only if you're 21 and over, 18 and over in Kentucky. If you have a gambling problem, please call or text 1-800-GAMBLER. To the lock, we go. All righty, y'all. I don't have a ton to say. This feels like the squarest of the square plays, but I look at stochastic projections. Obviously, stochastic odd shopper one in the same, the same in one. However you want to be phrasing that, I did a terrible job. Again, I feel like shit. So we're going to just talk about what it is that I'm projecting and why it is that we're going to jam Alvin Kamara here in this spot for a full unit. 68 and a half rushing yards. Stochastic projections. We've got him closer to 90. Yeah, 87 and change. It is definitely a spot where without Chris Olave, without Rashid Shahid, we could see complete ineptitude and it could be a dynamic duo. Yeah, Spencer Rattler throw, or ran a little bit last week. Uh, again, he's not going to be getting mixed in here as much, but Alvin Kamara needs to go out and win them a football game. If you're going to see New Orleans be competitive, and one of the main reasons that I'm not going to be backing a Denver here at two and a half is that I just... I want somehow the Saints to get ahead. I want somehow in a low variance football game, 36 and a half total, Alvin Kamara to get 20, 25 touches, specifically in the running game like we saw in weeks two and three, Dallas and Philly. Now, 
Without all of these other pieces out there, we've seen them in come from behind mode against Atlanta, 19 rushing attempts still for Kamara, 11 against Kansas City, major come from behind mode, and then Tampa Bay, only 13, they got completely pulverized. But considering the game script for this, considering Patrick Sertan out, and that is definitely somebody at the cornerback position who is an above average run stopper, I got to tell you, there's a lot of unknowns still on how New Orleans should be handling their passing attack. Again, 188, 186, we're seeing for Spencer Rather uh, passing props. I'm pretty confident that uh, Kubiak is going to run the football here, the offensive coordinator from New Orleans. And I think Alvin Kamara sees 15 plus touches in just about all game scripts going forward here in something like this. 4.1 rushes per year, uh, yards per rush here this season. You just do the math on this with 15, that's at 60. I think we're going to see Denver be able to do whatever they want, stopping the pass here. They're fifth already in football, 170 yards per game that they're giving up there. They're stout, but 114 on the ground. Nobody really pushing him for touches. Jamal Williams, distant, distant second. We'll see as Miller gets worked back in uh, potentially sooner rather than later. Kendra Miller, but my favorite prop is very square and I don't really care. Alvin Kamara, over 68 and a half rushing yards. Lock it up. I'll see you guys here for the main slate week seven coming up on Sunday. And that does it for a Thursday night football edition of Lindy's Leans, Likes, and Locks. Head to the comment section below. Let me know your favorite plays. Let me know if you tailed me on the Buffalo money line. That was good times. A lot of New York Jets fans were not very happy with me, but maybe they're happier now. They're going to get a primetime Sunday night game. We'll talk about that all in the week seven Lindy's, of course. Bet365, check, the, check them out as well. It's Tails, Lindy50, get 50% off all of my picks all the live long day. And I'm probably going to be in bed just sleeping this off, whatever this freaking thing is. Stay, don't feel like me. There we go. That's a nice way to finish a video. Thank you, producer Jacob. Until next time, friends, I'm Eric Lindquist. Best of luck in the NFL streets on Thursday.